much more successful with someone else uh, trying to get a car than than coming to Limehouse with a few grand. There are so yeah. many white trash scumbags in Harlan County. <laughs> yeah. you, you can get you can get a car that's going to get you out of town, right? Yeah, but yeah. I do love that uh, uh, Limehouse here. This is the first lesson that Ava gets on how to disappear um, without being caught. And uh, Raylan gives her another lesson on how to disappear without being caught a little later that we'll, that we'll hear a clip of. So, uh, so this is almost a, a dry run for Ava. <laughs> she's getting a lot of, uh, she's getting a lot of pointers on how to, how to not fuck up disappear her disappearing act. So. Uh, yeah. If you wanted to disappear, I think we've talked about this before, but you would need a, like a whole set of papers documentation you need something yeah you need something you you can you can modify your cards to you know your credit cards to have a different name on them or something um but but if the the numbers get used you're going to get tracked so you you can't really use cards you've got to use cash uh and uh, and you got to have id and and it's got to be it doesn't have to be perfect that's the thing about id in these situations right because you're you're going to you're already going, you're staying off the grid as much as possible. So it's not like you're going to the Marriott in uh, Chicago to stay the (laughs) night, right? You're staying in some sort of little crappy roadside motel. That's, you know, going to be fine uh, to, you know, take your fake ID as long as it's not glaringly fake. So you don't have to have perfect documents. You just have, you just need something. Then when you eventually do need to get a job or whatever, you're going to need better documents and, the goal is to avoid law enforcement, which, by the way, I want to talk about this for a second, avoiding law enforcement. So I went to uh, Romania and England in uh, August, and uh, I was in Romania for four or five days. I was in England for four or five days. I barely saw any police officers the entire time I was in both of those places. I was in Bucharest, which is the largest city in Romania, and I was in London, of course, the largest city in the UK. And, uh, I saw almost no police in mm-hmm. Bucharest. I saw the gendarmes, which are sort of like a private, well, a public security force. They guard like banks and, and money exchanges and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, national sites of interest, those sorts of things. They're not really cops. They're sort of like, uh, they're sort of like security guards with a badge, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And that, but I didn't see any real cops. And then in the UK, it was the same thing. There was no, there were no cops running around. There's no, you know, there's not cop cars on every corner or, or anything like that. They're not parked out in front of the, like, like in Vegas where they're parked out in front of the casinos and the show of force every night with the, yeah. with the lights on and everything. Yeah. Um, and then I come back here and I can't go like two miles without seeing at least a, po- a police officer. It's crazy. And, yeah. and I, it, it took that for me to really realize how kind of, policed we are here as compared to like other sort of western nations it's really remarkable the difference well it's it's a uh, an industry really right so you know so it's always expanding the police are you know they 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 never cut budgets no it's an insatiable beast that has to be fed yeah from a money standpoint yep and it's gotten to the point where they're, you know, they look to create crimes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, go look at the United guess, States uh, Code someday if you uh, think they're not yeah. trying to create crimes. It takes up an entire oh, yeah. wall. <clears throat> and it's, uh, well, I think I'd mentioned this before. There's a there's a book out there. I think it was like called Three Felonies a Day. And uh, you know, somebody could theoretically charge you with that many felonies every just for existing, just for know, doing your, your doing your daily life every day. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. was the name? Uh, Silverglade was the guy's name. Harvey okay. Silverglade. Okay. And uh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's just, as you were saying, just because there's so many laws that, uh, that they, uh, that the government could, could throw against you or charge you with. Yep. So uh, charge you with breaking at least. So it's uh, yeah. I don't, so we're, are we the land of the free and the home of the brave? <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's pretty remarkable how different it feels uh, yeah. with the amount of law enforcement on the streets here versus uh, Bucharest and, and London. And I got to tell you, I felt I felt perfectly safe there. Felt perfectly oh, yeah. safe there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the London, I, th- I think it, it um, 
the because I've seen the like video and you know like you got to take that with a grain of salt, yeah. but just the the amount of it seems like like knife violence because nobody carries guns there. Right. <laughs> like, uh, it seems like that that maybe it just depends on what part of the city you're in. I, I guess, think it does. Right? Yeah, so. I think it depends. And and when I was talking to my my brother in law who's in who's in law enforcement uh, in Bucharest, he was telling me that uh, that from a violent crime standpoint, there's almost none. Um, there's a lot of property crime or, or a, a significant amount of property crime. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but very, very little violent crime, very little violence, very little, uh, assaults. In, uh, in Bucharest, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I wonder, so what's the, what's the difference, right? What, what's the difference? Because the, the crime, the crime rates I, I thought had gone, gone down until COVID, right? So maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe yeah, uh, it could be part of that. It could be, you know, the cost of living. I mean, I will, yeah. <laughs> I will tell you the cost of living in Bucharest is amazingly low. It was uh, astonishing. So yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I just thought it was interesting. And, and you think about this from the perspective of somebody who's trying to run from the law yeah. uh, and just think about, it. I mean, every couple of miles on the freeway, you're driving past another state highway patrolman or, or sheriff. Um, yeah. Imagine trying to do that, you know, when you're a fugitive, it would be impossible. Yeah. And yet, yeah, you yet you that, got that guy from that Brazilian murderer dude who ran around in the woods in Pennsylvania for seventeen days or whatever uh, yeah, last that's month. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So no matter how yeah. many cops you have, they can't stop that. Yeah. Well, he uh, he, uh, he escaped from uh, what was it like? Uh, what was the prison? I, I don't remember what the prison was. Prison was. It was yeah. a prison, but he did like uh he did like the the uh, spider climb, like the ninja warrior spider climb up the wall to get out. Oh, and again, really? apparently somebody else had done that like six months prior and they didn't really fix the issue. It's like the oh, death geez. it's like the hole in the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you mean you mean the hole in the in the, in Iraq or wherever it was with Top Gun? That exactly, was the plot of Top Gun. Too. Exactly, <laughs> that little hatch in uh, yes, China yes. or wherever the Himalayas or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> <clears throat> the mysterious, uh, the mysterious villains, uh, the unnamed yes <laughs> enemies to be determined later. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so Ava and Arrow roll out to get the cash. Uh, Boyd, uh, after having discovered what, uh, uh, what Avery Markham and uh, Catherine Hale are up to, Boyd has sent Carl out to intimidate the other Harlan landover landowners to make sure they don't sell to Avery Markham. Uh, Carl reports back and says that, uh, they, he got them all on board <laughs> so, with his gun. Uh, he said some of them had to be convinced, but they all understood. Um, and they are working on a new plan to get in to uh, Markham's money, and it involves mine shafts and mine tunnels. And they need some help, and so they need to recruit Zachariah. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about Zachariah here in a second. But uh, but Markham is also dealing with a crisis because his gang uh, is dealing with boy the repercussions of what Carl has been doing. And so they they realize that they can't uh they can't acquire any more of this land because someone is interfering with their ability to do it. And they don't know who. They've narrowed it down to either Boyd or Raylan, they think. Uh but they determined that Calhoun is the uh the real problem here. So, uh, so Markham sends Walker to, uh, to clean that up. Walker sends, uh, Seabass and, uh, Choo Choo to go take care of things with, uh, with Calhoun, find out who's in their way and, uh, eliminate them. Uh, meanwhile, Boyd is attempting to recruit Zachariah into the party and, uh, Zachariah is not so happy to see him. He, uh, uh, points the shotgun, takes the booze that Boyd brought as a peace offer offering and goes back inside and uh, leaves Boyd waiting. Um, apparently, Zachariah is Ava's uncle, and he is very unhappy that uh, uh, Bowman beat the hell out of Ava at every possible opportunity and has never forgiven the Crowders for it, even though Ava killed Bowman in retaliation. So he's still holding a grudge. Uh, but apparently he's some sort of super miner, uh, and so they need his help to uh, to find the right spots. Um, 
We then see a little bit of a scene between Ava and Errol where Errol says, hey, you know, Limehouse took me back in, had to punish me. Um, we see that Bob sees them in Harlan and, uh, and Errol then tells Ava, sorry, you're not getting your car until we get our money. And that changes the deal because Ava's whole thing was she was going to get her car, tell them where to find the money, which doesn't actually exist, and drive away and leave them with nothing. And of course, they're never going to leave that to chance. <laughs> so that, that pretty short-sighted on Ava's part to think that she would get away with it that way. And, uh, and so he tells her, no, we're going to get the money first and then you get your car. And she says, okay, well, we're going to need a shovel uh, to get the money. And uh, so they have to run by the hardware store. But uh, Bob's following them. Bob's got eyes on them. While all of this is going on, uh, our boy Ficus is in a motel waiting on a prostitute named Cindy to come and visit him. And uh, instead, he gets a visit from Mikey and Wynn. And uh, I have a clip of that. All I did was tell the truth. Why the sudden change of heart? Because I couldn't take the idea of Ava being gone forever because of what I did. So you had what one might call a crisis of conscience. What? A crisis of conscience. Yeah. Yeah, right. What do you think of that, Mikey? I think it's some soft-ass nonsense. If what you claim is true, Shouldn't you be getting ass raped in the shower right about now? No, I even decided not to press charges. Wow, that was nice of her. Why do you think she decided to do that? Look, I don't know, man. Why don't you ask her, huh? I, mean, I lost my job, my pension. This whole thing laid me real low, all right? Maybe she didn't want to lay me any lower. So you sent her to hell and she decided to let you off the hook? Or maybe she was so relieved I did the right thing, she forgave me. Did you ever think of that smart guy? Yeah. But that's just not gonna work for us. <sighs> what do you guys want me to say, huh? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just say whatever you want me to say, all right? What is that? That is good old-fashioned cattle prod. I used to use uh, tasers, but then they started equipping the cartridges with these ID tags, made them easily trackable. But this little baby right here delivers two million volts with no record it ever happened. Last chance, Al. I don't want to be here anymore. Please, don't, don't do that. So Albert gets worked over with the cattle prod a little bit. <clears throat> And uh, to his credit, he's a tough, tough little fucker. He uh, he takes uh, he takes quite a bit of uh, of cattle prod, uh, and you know says that he loves Ava and he he couldn't bear to see her locked up forever. And eventually, Wynn believes him and uh, lets him go. We also see that Tim and Rachel are in the next room just in case they need to intervene. <laughs> Uh, because he's going to tell the truth because he tells the truth. Right. So if they have to go in and, and, uh, take care of the situation with Wynn and Mikey, they will, but, uh, but they would prefer not to. And so they're sitting there waiting and hoping that Ficus is going to hold out. And boy, does that little bastard hold out? I'm, I'm, I was impressed by Ficus that he didn't, uh, that he it didn't was surprising. Him. It yeah. really was. Yeah, man. He has like such a pedo vibe, like, like he does. Hansen, you <laughs> yes. know, like, yeah. So well done. Just such a little wiener. I mean, he was so yeah. good in Buffy at being a little wiener yeah. too. Like, yeah, he's, he's very, very good at it. He's, he's in, yeah. um, he's in billions. Uh, he plays the he plays, he plays a hedge fund guy who eventually became the secretary of the treasury. And, uh, and he's an absolute wiener in that too. <laughs> so, yes. He's typecast. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> I guess when you're, you know, 4'10 or whatever he is, that's what happens to you. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. I, I also appreciated seeing Wynn back uh, as kind of the menacing sort of uh, threatening figure. Yeah. He, he's been very sort of comic relief businessman sort of uh, win for the last several seasons. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it's good to see him back in sort of the uh, the mentality that he was in that first season stand. 